You could save a ton of time and money by painting your cabinets to look like Pottery Barn, and I'll show you how. I'm making this video with the homeowner in mind who wants to knock this project out maybe in the course of a weekend and be able to still live in the house, breathe the air that's in the house, not get takeout on every single meal. And that's why I chose liquid sandpaper, but you could choose any liquid deglosser that's going to remove the sheen from your kitchen cabinets. Then I'm gonna go in with a super solid primer like Styx. This is never let me down. It adheres to laminate. Any type of surface is so good. That's the other reason that I picked this finish for this video is you can use this on any type of cabinets. We're talking laminate, fake wood, uh, you know, wood, painted surface. It doesn't matter. As long as you follow these steps, it will adhere. I got a little ahead of myself and painted the primer on before I covered up the hinges with some masking tape. So, you know, just reverse that order. Then we're going in with the color Rugged Tan. As you guys know, I usually use this um, paint either from Home Depot or Lowe's just for easy access. But for this project, you've got to go with Advance or something similar that's going to have that really strong cabinet quality strength to it. You guys see me use a lot of paints on this channel, but when it comes to cabinets, you need something that is going to be really durable it's going to be washable it's going to withstand like the the wear and tear that happens in a kitchen is so much different than any other furniture so keep that in mind and it costs a little bit more to go with the benjamin Moore advance on this project but it's totally worth it That smaller brush that I'm using here, it really helped me get into the nooks and crannies without being so small that the job became tedious. So definitely grab one of those. And then we're going in with the decorative glaze from Rust-Oleum. This is such a great product. And if you're just tuning in here and this is all new to you, uh, this is a big hallmark of my channel about, let's see, my daughter just turned five. So when she was born, I started experimenting and trying to figure out the perfect color match to Pottery Barn because everything I found online, although the wood looks were all pretty and stuff, they didn't match Pottery Barn uh, quite like I wanted and everything looked a little bit too blended. And so I saw out a way to try to give it that texture and I was successful and this channel was born and how it helped me grow and, and, uh, people, you know, kind of were able to find me through that. And I'm so grateful for all of you guys being here. And so I'd love it. If you're new here, if you want to stick around and see this kind of content, this is what I do. I have a small furniture refinishing business in Georgia and I recently started doing some cabinetry jobs. I'm not taking on tons of cabinetry jobs because they are a lot of work, but, and people are very particular about what they want. Anyway, then you're gonna get that glaze on there, smooth it out with a deck staining brush. And this glaze has a really long open work time. And so you'll have lots of time to get it on there, get the product working and do the next step. And like I said, if you guys want to see a different type of wood look, let me know in the comments. And then if you get a lot of likes on that, I'll know that that is something that the people want because there's only so much time in the day for me to put out videos and, and different colors. And so let me know in the comments if there's a type of color that that you want to see of uh, these faux wood looks and I will um, check it out and see if you get a lot of likes and and if people want to see that the deck staining brush is absolutely paramount it really helps smooth out the finish and blend everything so nicely and then you have that kind of pinky undertone from the rugged tan color peeking through and then the next step that we do is really going to make this shine and also in this video I painted everything going sideways like you see right because that's the easiest and most beginner friendly way but at the end of the video I show you what I would do if I were doing this professionally for somebody's kitchen cabinets that was paying me and what I end up doing is I switch and go up and down 
I end up going with the grain of the original wood cabinetry. And the cool thing about that step is two things. It's what to do if you mess up, because it's the exact same procedure I would follow if you if you mess up any portion of this uh, job on your cabinets or furniture. And then number two is you could go back and do this second step, the more detailed direction flip, uh, you could go back and do that later on, months later, a year later, if they still sell the products. And you could do, you know, that's something you could add on later on if you want to, which is really cool, I think. Something that really helps me is having a variety of different size brushes on hand. And we're talking painter quality brushes. You can see this is a rounded synthetic something that someone would use for art type of paintbrush and what i can do with that is smooth out any mistakes that might happen if there's a hair in my finish which you guys i have a couple of dogs and one of them's a golden retriever so hairs happen and you can get in all the nooks and crannies where the product builds up and just dab it away and so that little paintbrush right there or something similar is so helpful now once you do the brushing go in with the deck staining brush and smooth things out again if you need to if there's a spot that just looks a little bit too harsh I'm really loving how this particular door is looking at this point, but there have been times in the past where it didn't turn out like I wanted it for whatever reason. There was too much glaze or I brushed it too much. And so you can take a wet microfiber cloth and just wipe away all the glaze because the dry time is so long. You have enough of that, you know, it's still wet enough that you can just wipe it away at that point. And I've had to do that before. Like I said, it takes a really long time to dry. So to keep us busy while that is drying, I ordered a little side project, a little side quest, if you will. And did you know that you can buy plants off eBay? Yes, these are just succulent cuttings or succulent rootings, maybe you wanna call them. But apparently you can just order them off eBay. I've got 24 different varieties <laughs> that I'm gonna be planting. I have these little thrifted balls that I drilled some holes in the bottom. I'm putting some eggshells because I heard that their eggshells are good for that. I am no gardener. I have aspirations to grow some flowers and have more of a pretty garden yard atmosphere. But at this time I suck and <laughs> You know, I, I was told that succulents are very beginner friendly, so that's why I'm starting with succulents. So <laughs> if I fail at this, I'll be so sad. But um, so you just need to get the right dirt and it'll say on the bag whether or not it's good for succulents. And then you're just gonna stick the rootings in there. And I just thought I'd take you guys along with me on this project. I'll make sure and link the person that I bought them for. This is not sponsored in any way, shape or form. It's just a little side quest that I decided to do to keep myself busy while the glaze is drying. Because if you're anything like me, I will be out there staring it down, waiting for it to dry, touching it and making accidental marks on it. And um, really the best thing to do is once you get that glaze on there is just to walk away. You need to walk away for, it's best if you can just leave it overnight. So if that can be the last thing that you do um, in the day and then you can just leave it overnight. And especially if it's in your kitchen, it's gonna dry really nice. How cute are these little succulents? I did about three of those and I'm gonna put them in my bathroom by the bright sunlight and see if they live. Then I'm gonna go back out and check on this cabinet, make sure it's dry before I move on to the next step. Now, if you wanna see how I would do it for you know a professional job, and do all this taping off, then go ahead and watch this next part. But if you don't care about that and you wanna skip ahead to just watch the dry brushing, the clear coat and the dry brushing, the dry brushing is at 13 minutes and 37 seconds and then I go quickly in with the clear coat. But if you wanna watch how to do this more professionally, this is gonna be for you. So up and down is where the wood grain is going on the sides and then in the middle it's going across and then on that, um, on the middle middle section that little part that's poking out it actually goes up and down so there's quite a few changes here but you're only going to need to tape off uh, a few areas so, so for me i'm just going to because it's raised i can just follow along the edges it doesn't need to be perfect because it's the same finish underneath and so i'm not going to be missing any spots and i'm just able to just paint that over there or you could use a roller would be even easier and just get it on there. But the direction that you paint does matter a little bit here. And so try to go in the direction and give it a little bit of thickness, a little bit of buildup, uh, going the direction of the grain, the way you paint. And then that will help even more with giving the wood look they are going for.
Now we're going in with the dry brushing. This is just a cheap sample pot from Bear. It's in the color Natural Twine. And you're gonna use a chip brush, just a cheap little chip brush. It has that jagged edge. That's really what you need. And so it's gotta be a chip brush or this won't work quite right. And then you're gonna dab it onto a paper plate and then dab it onto your paper towel to just make sure there's just barely any product on there. And then uh, just slightly drag it over the top in a very, very feathery way way and then you can use the paper towel and keep a wet paper towel or a wet microfiber cloth handy to wipe away anything that you get on there like too thick you can see I got it on there a little too thick again I'm going with that grain now that we've done all that hard work to get the look I'm just going to keep that going but you don't have to do any taping off or at least I sure didn't and it looked just as good this is such a fun part of the project, doing the dry brushing. I love doing it so much, but this is also a part of the project where you can uh, fix any mistakes that may have happened. So you can go in with the rugged tan color and do some dry brushing on the spots that might look a little too dark. Or you, if you wanna add more depth, you could do a dry brushing with a darker color. There's lots of fun things that you could do to experiment. But for me, I like to do the natural twine and it just gives that extra dimension and helps me to lighten up any parts that are too dark. And that brings us to our final step to do the clear coat. This is just gonna give your cabinets that extra protection and longevity that I know you want and scrubability because who doesn't wanna be able to clean their kitchen cabinets? And you can really follow your heart here as far as what clear coat you wanna use, but I like using this water-based um, matte polyurethane. And I like the matte finish for wood looks because I feel like it gives it even more of that like wood look and I just like matte finish anyway. And I'm just going to apply it with a paintbrush. You guys know earlier in the video, I fell in love with this smaller paintbrush and I'm still using it. I really like it. <laughs> I feel like I move just as quickly. I'm able to get just as much product on there and use the smaller paintbrush. And it's like nicer on my wrist, the feeling of it. And then I can get into all the nooks and crannies too. So you guys might see a big switch on my channel. I might be switching over to this smaller paintbrush. If you're here till the end, then you really get to help me choose the hardware and PS, you're my favorite for sticking around till the end. <laughs> but I have two options here. We could go with a black knob. It's square though, and I know a lot of people don't like square knobs. Or we could go with what you guys have seen me use a million times on all, like all my recent furniture makeovers, which are these beautiful knobs. What do you think? Which would you go with? The black or go with the bronze? I'm thinking bronze. But isn't she a beaut? This would look so great in any kitchen. I would recommend it. 10 out of 10. And thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know in the comments what color woods you guys want to see in the future. Bye.